what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're gonna be talking about final destination 6 in this video here today final destination bloodlines which is supposed to be coming out next year around the anniversary of the original film coming to imax but no specific release date has been announced the film is following this family connected to this woman named iris who was supposed to die many decades ago at this grand opening of the Skyview Tower restaurant that stood 10 to 15,000 feet in the air. Now, I will say that all of this stuff is rumored, alleged, not confirmed. So if you're not looking to have anything disclosed before seeing the film, you shouldn't be watching this video. But for those of you who don't care, then let's just get right on into it. So Bloodworth's backstory is 100% going to happen with a major flashback to his childhood since he survived the same tower collapse that Iris did all those years ago. I cannot stress this enough, and I believe I brought it up before, but Final Destination 6 has a lot in common with Final Destination 2, thanks to several callbacks that are scattered throughout the movie. We have a pregnancy, lots of logs, an important piece of information disclosed about a past character even though they don't appear on screen. Someone even tries to enact the same plan featured during the third act of the second film. So there's a lot going on that is referencing final destination 2 not that the other films aren't referenced but a lot of fd2 seems to be being like paint like respected or like nostalgia baited in a way if you will the door is left open for a return if a seventh film is greenlit i guess and if you've been following any of my videos you know who it is and you can go ahead and just be excited down in the comment section below if you are so inclined everything quality wise i'm hearing is pretty much all over the place at this point it appears the movie is either going to be okay or it could be a haunting reminder of final destination 4 and its horrendous cgi or it could be quite good i'm hearing this film doesn't have some of the best cgi spots but who knows what the film could actually look like by the time it comes out i'm also hearing it is better than the last two entries still our opening sky skyview tower fall collapse should be a rather intense moment with so many moving pieces featured in it but it might be a bit too over the top and i'm not gonna lie as fun as it does read on paper i can see the opening being a bit dramatic and outlandish even for this franchise's standards but there are some fun set pieces that might make me and many of you just completely overlook how outlandish it just gets compared to the other openings the standout kill sequence might be the mri moment so keep your eyes out for that i will say it does not sound like the film is taking itself all that too seriously and that might be a detriment to it for some but in a lot of ways it seems like this this film is just poking fun at itself and almost parodying the franchise in a way which might be a hit for some might not be a hit with others I think the franchise does need to start to take itself a bit more serious if this one is in fact just not taking itself too seriously. Something that feels a little bit more in the line of those first three movies. I think that's what people really want to see. And if we don't get that with Final Destination 6, people are just going to still want to see that hopefully in a seventh film or however many of these films we end up getting. The kills themselves do have a build up like the last movies. I guess the best comparison I can give is to think of Todd's death and Miss Luton's death. In fact, a lawnmower scene featured in this film has been compared to that of Miss Luton's demise. So fingers crossed that that scene is drenched in suspense because Miss Luton's demise was just all suspense with no room to breathe. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson seems to be on the soundtrack still to elicit some sort of laughter during one scene. Our characters are going to use a death journal to guide them through the movie. There are two ways this movie could end. And I say that knowing both ways. <laughs> we either get a complete callback to Final Destination 3 or we get a mix of Final Destination 3 and the opening of Final Destination 2. Take from that what you will. Caitlin Santawana, I'm hearing, does a wonderful job leading the film, and our characters are quite self aware to the point where, again, it feels like this film might be parodying itself and the whole franchise, but whatever. Tony Todd's scenes are undoubtedly going to be emotional, and his final lines are poetic considering his unfortunate passing that just occurred. At the center of the story will be Iris's grandchildren trying to rekindle their relationship with their mother who comes back into their life or who they try to reconnect with when all of this starts spiraling. But Final Destination 6 doesn't sound like it's going to be a complete train wreck. It really just sounds like it's going to be like a very mixed film. I personally can see myself favoring this over 4 and 5. But I don't see myself favoring it over those first three movies. 
I think the last really good, really truly good Found Destination movie we got was that third one. Found Destination 5 I didn't think was bad and I don't hate Found Destination 4, but Found Destination 4 to me is the weakest of the of the franchise and I think it's still going to be that case after the 6th film. But knowing what I know, my my biggest issue right now is the lore rules seem to be getting ignored because the character that tries to do something that happened in the second film doesn't get the same results that the previous character got and it's like well what's going on here are we breaking rules just for the sake of having a reason to inject somebody into the seventh movie what's going on i don't understand what's happening i need to see the film myself obviously to kind of get the full context but i've been hearing from multiple sources that the film seems to be breaking some of its own rules established in earlier in the franchise and i don't see why other than the fact that you wanted to shock your audience have some sort of nostalgia bait leave room or leave room open for a sequel and as a result it might be a detriment to the overall final product but it's a good thing that I'm not hearing that the film is bad. I've yet to hear that the film is completely trash. I've just been hearing that it's okay or it's just good. I haven't heard that it's spectacular or anything like that. It seems like it'll just be Found Destination 5, but maybe watered down. I think that's the best way I can say to pre compare to prepare everyone out there who might be already going in with these high expectations. I would just be prepared for a movie that is acceptable. Not something that has you rolling your eyes. Although me and everyone listening right now, by the time we see the movie, we could have a lot to say about this film and how it's trash and how it's the worst, this, that, and the third. But hopefully that won't be the case. You guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Uh, again, if you know who I'm talking about when it comes to that big revelation that's featured in this film, you can already share your excitement down below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.